All right, it's your girl, the thick writer, shape, Miss Courtney Lyric, and I am joined today by Rakea Butler and Lupita. Two of my, two of my, like, way back, way back. So, like, Rakea and I are practically cousins, <laughs> and Lupita and I are practically sisters. So, um, why don't y'all introduce yourself to the people? Okay. What do you want me to do? Oh. <laughs> I say introduce. <laughs> 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 Who you want to go first? I'm a person. Go first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Hello, hello. I am Rikaya, um Butler Pierce. My last name is still Pierce. Um, <laughs> I am a single mom of four beautiful children. Um, let's just say I'm multi talented, multi careered <laughs> at this point. <laughs> but um, I'm here. Glad to be here. That's Hi. All righty. Um, my name is Labrika Moore. Professionally, I'm known as Wondrous or Wonder. Uh, I'm a writer, a poet, a seamstress. If, for the most part, if you can think of it and it's artistic, I'm about it. Um, I'm learning how to paint and stuff like that. It's, it's just all over the place, but we're going to figure it out. Living life. Speaking of, that is actually our topic today. It's about, and that's why I specifically told y'all because I have known, first of all, it's like such a, I don't want to be corny, but it just feels good to talk to people that know you. You know what I'm saying? Like people right. that have seen you like evolve into like from childhood into womanhood, they know you from like before life got a hold of your ass. You know? So <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be amongst, you know, your peoples. And um, also, since we are peoples, I know firsthand that probably on this live are at least at least 15 to 20 gifts, like just between the three of us, because we got nails, we got hair, we got, you know, screenwriting, we got poetry, we got singing, you know, making music, like, it's a lot of gifts on this one podcast. So I was very particular with that. When I was like, I'm going to start doing audio and video. And one of the first topics I want to do is the frustration because it's been a frustrating season um, as a multi-talented girl. And I was like, who else do I know? Boom. Y'all need to came to mind. And of course, my sister, Toya, but she cannot be with us now. But um, so I'm just going to start with, okay, what, okay, out of your many gifts, what do you guys feel like is your strongest or your main gift? I'll go first. Um, I feel like my strongest and main gift is oral communication when it comes to speaking, when it comes to writing or it's anything dealing with the English language. That's where I strive. Um, and that's where my this season focus is supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. So um, I would have to say. My strongest main gift would be dance um, and like performance. Um, I think from a Christian perspective, I'm anointed in dance and I am more so on the teaching side of that as well, which is what I'm doing in this season, what I've been doing um, for a while now. So, um, so yeah. Okay. And I think similar to Labrita, um, when I really sat and thought about it, because it's, it's hard sometimes to pinpoint when you have multiple things, but everything I do in some form or fashion, with the exception of makeup and FX makeup, circles back to writing. So I guess like Rakea says, I think that's my main anointing, that storytelling is something I've always done since I was a girl. So whether it's, you know, through plays, through music, um, through books, through comics, it's still writing, you know, even podcasts. So I think writing would be my main, you know, gift or thing. So... So, with that being said, what are some of the negatives that you guys feel like come with being a multi-talented girl, a girly? I like to call it multi-talented girly because there are good, like, it's a, of course, it's a good, and we'll talk about that too. But what are some of the bad things? Well, or or is bad too strong a word? Some of the less positive, less, you know. Yeah. It's frustrating. What's the frustrating part of this process? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say for me, the most frustrating thing is not being able to do everything 
all at once. Like, cause sometimes you just, you like, oh my God, I could do this. I could do that. I could do this. Or you like thinking I could be making this type of money or, you know, whatever. But then sometimes it's just like, it's not the season for that. You know what I mean? Right. You just no, don't have to do it. And with you guys, y'all more so, y'all have gifts in the beauty industry. I, per- I really don't. Like, I mean, I do makeup, but. <laughs> I always feel like, Lord, of all the gifts you get, why can't I do hair? Like, I can't even braid. Like, I feel like if I could do hair, I would just be, you know, have a chick lined up. I wouldn't work for nobody. But then, of course. Have you changed? Because old Jordan was very, I'm going to try it for two seconds. It done, I'm not a perfect at it. I'm over it. It's not for me. That's who, me. who is, who is, who is? That's the me. But I did have a problem. <laughs> can, we, can we be honest? I did. <laughs> if you, if you were not able to do my hair, who was gonna do it? So you can either look raggedy or watch this YouTube and figure it out. And by golly, yeah, <laughs> especially when we got that Jmart girl, we got the discount in the hair. I, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna at least try. But I can admit, it is not. <laughs> 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 I can do enough. Like I can do enough. I can do something to get me by, and I'm not gonna do no else hair. But um, a stop, no. And I wish, like you know how sometimes you wish, even though you have all these gifts, that another gift was your gift. Like in mm-hmm. high school, I went to dance. I didn't think writing poetry was cool. Nobody, <laughs> nobody was chanting a around the girl who drew the pictures. If you could, <laughs> if you could do the back bend and you could do the split, people liked you. So I was like, this is buddy. I want to dance, but I was stiff. I couldn't even pop. Like I was just like, Lord, what is this? Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. why did you know? But um, some of the more negative, like she said, a. In, in, I think because we are creative, we are low key ADHD, undiagnosed. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. In a day of freedom, you just want to, I could be writing this, I could be working on that book, I could be working on this book, I could work on this comic. But wait a minute, I need to do a video for TikTok, I need to do a makeup look for, hold up. <laughs> and it's like the brain is like, and the body can only do so much, and the mm-hmm. resources can only do so much, and the mind can only do so much. So it's like, that's a frustration within itself. And then because we are kind of I, I kind of group people like this. You got your your workers or your logical people, and that doesn't make mm-hmm. them right or wrong. They mm-hmm. are like they were told you go to school, you go to college, you get a you get a job, you move up in that job, you retire from that job. That's a logical I'm a worker and that's and there's nothing wrong with that. But you have them mm-hmm. and then you have your entrepreneurs. Your entrepreneurs are, they get a skill set and work for themselves. And so they might not be nine to fivers, but they still are not necessarily multi talented. They, they've gotten one thing and I'm going to live off of this and I'll never do a nine to five, but also I'm not going to be all over the place. And multi talented people tend to look to these two groups to be all over the place. And we're a small yeah. group. Yeah. So we're looking like chickens with our head cut off. <laughs> to our friends and loved ones, and really, it's just God made me like this. Like I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I, you know, whenever I put my hand in something, I tend to be able to do it, and I it just mm-hmm. is what it is. I didn't ask for it. Yeah. Like if I could mm-hmm. do, I would do hair <laughs> or be a nurse. <laughs> but I'm so empathetic. I couldn't. Be, like when I got pregnant with Janelle, my dad was very, and it's from a loving place. They're coming from a loving place. You need to be an EMT. It's it's real now. You got a child, or you need to be an EMT. And I was like, me? I can't even, like, I can't even take a phone call at the hospital without crying and praying for people on the side. And I'm too much of an empath for that. You don't know, you don't know me well if you think I can see somebody's bent up body like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and put them in a, no, I would be boo They would fire me because it's not me because I feel things so deeply. So, but was it a logic? Of course that's logical. You want a job, you want a job that has benefits. You know, got dental, got, you know, because that's the thing to do, even though he's an artist. He's been an artist all my life. But when you're take, when you're speaking out of love to someone and, and you don't know what to do and they don't know what to do, you're going to yep. come from a logical standpoint. So that's the frustration, too. Your, your friends and loved ones mean well, but they want you to be stable and being a creative, you might as well hang that up because <laughs> even your favorite actor is living gig to gig. Like if you are a real creative, 
you are job to job. Now, technically, a hairstylist is too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Technically, you know, but the difference between a skill and a talent is skills are something that people need. Like, we need plumbers. You know, you need, no one's going to not get their hair done. <laughs> because we saw during the pandemic, no matter what, you know, and I tell my boys that too. I'm like, if you want to you wanna be smart, go to college. If you want to be paid, get your skill. And if you want to be rich, solve a problem. But skills, AI will not do away with skills. But as we speak, AI is doing away with writers. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. doing away with artists. People are getting I think AI has the, the potential to get rid of everything. But I'm okay. I'm very organic in the sense of like I was in Ross the other day and I walked up to the register and I was like, Are there any humans? I'd like a human. And I, I feel like there's gonna always be the population of me's where I'd rather a human with a human interaction. Yeah. But I mean, ain't, ain't no robot gonna come do you a twenty seven piece. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, like, I'm 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 you know, I mean, the robots are doing nails. Apparently, there's an there's a machine, and, and they <laughs> do hair, and they do surgeries. I feel like if you can do a surgery, it can definitely fix the transmission. So, well, I'm not surgery to a robot, but I mean, <laughs> again, because there's a population of us that prefer the human interaction. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I prefer the human because I think about all the times where. The computer fails, or the computer misunderstands, et cetera, et cetera. I rather the human eye on the equation. That ain't never about. People don't f up because they do, you know. Absolutely. At least, you know, at least there's something. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but like I was saying, with with a skill set, for the most part, until as the technology grows, okay, eventually robots may take over the world. But as of right now. You cannot call a robot to come fix your clock toilet. Like that that issue that she had today. Uh, a plumber oh. came and fixed that. You know what I'm saying? The so, robot would have died in the puddle. In the <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so when I speak to younger kids, I always tell them, even if you got a gift, I hate to say that as a creative, but also kind of like my dad with me. Even if, and I tell my boy the same thing. Okay, you want to be a dang creator. That's important, and that's a good thing to strive for, and I'm definitely going to support that as your mama, but also, if you want to stay paid, it wouldn't hurt to learn how to cut hair. It wouldn't learn how, you know, it wouldn't hurt to, you know, pick up welding. It wouldn't hurt to pick up mechanics, because that's something that will keep you paid. This is a moment of you have changed, because yeah. I remember us having a conversation, and you was like, God don't need no backup plan. Let me tell you that. Oh, okay. well, life will do yeah. what life does. Time, yeah. will, do, time so will do what it does. <laughs> and being a mom, like being a single mom, like you got to, like, I learned that the hard yeah, way. Yeah. And, you, know, <laughs> ahead, okay, you, can't, you can't be out here playing games and you got bills and kids and mouths to feed and all of that. Like, you got to, you got to be paid like and all the time. Someone who has tried it multiple times. Like first, yeah. I own own business and straight for it. And when, and you know, <laughs> and when it started to get neck and neck, because I'm only making $12 at the cost center. So mm -hmm. when that, when it's getting neck and neck, and it's between the rent for this building and our actual rent, Courtney Leary's book nook had to go. You know, so then I took yep. another leap of faith and moved out here and went to film school. And, and during that season, it was tight as a bolt around here. because. But, you know, I wouldn't recommend that. I, I would recommend doing that while you are single. But... I had to get the knowledge. Like I moved away from Shreveport to get the knowledge. But what I was hoping was after film school, I'm like, okay, I've got my degree. I've got the knowledge. And I already got the talent because that's an that's an anointing I've always had. Mm -hmm. Okay, jobs, here we go. And I mean I was I was the top student. I really was because but because I was older than most of my classmates and I was a mother. Before we even graduated, I was I was getting that resume, that artistic resume. I was getting out there while we were still learning how to do it in class. I was submitting to hundreds of jobs and I did get one in film with a church. And when I heard what he was offering to pay me, I was like, I can't live off of that. Like, what is this? This is a church. <laughs> and they wanted me to be their videographer. Now, true enough, it's only three days a week of work, but still, this ain't so, you know. With my head down in shame, I had to head back to the college because, well, 
you know, you gotta eat. But um, life will teach you not to necessarily be like for F dreams, dreams aren't real, dreams are for It teaches you to plan, to right, to strive for what you want, but also don't be no fool because no matter how it's on my phone. You know, how talented you are and how much you trust and believe in you, the rules still apply even to you. You don't work, you don't eat. That's Bible. <laughs> mm-hmm. so you don't get to bypass that just because you're talented. Right. And, yeah. life, and life taught me that on several occasions. Because you'll look and you'll see somebody with this much talent. See how much? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got mm-hmm. a third of the talent of you and it's really out here doing it. And it's like, what the... What's this stuff? She can't even sing. What are we listening to? Like, what is this? Mm-hmm. But they they follow whatever rules are in place. They follow either they know somebody or they follow the rules. So I mean, that's frustrating too. Um, bringing me to my next point. Uh, do you have any creative regrets? Hmm. Not yet, and not in this season. In this season, I'm really I'm learning how to try because I've been very fearful prior to. And in learning how to try, I'm also learning that like some of your tries are gonna win, some of your tries are just gonna be a try. So I don't have any creative regrets thus far. Yeah. Um, what I would like to say, based on something you said, is I know as me and some of the multi talented people I know. We will be multi talented and gifted, and that's it. Like, there isn't a whole lot of um tenacity and a whole lot of consistency behind it. So, I sat in the the feeling of, well, why is this person succeeding? And I know I can do better, or I could at least do what you're doing because what you're doing, ooh. (laughs) But the difference is that person has has put in the work that I haven't put in, amen. That's yeah. one too. And it's like with, with being a creative, we are scatter scatter branded people. We didn't ask for it. It is what it is. And it's like for me, the frustration, because the one thing I like about my personality is I will try. You know, I will do that step out on faith. But if I'm not seeing results after a while, um, I'm probably gonna move on or I'll be back. <laughs> like it's like, okay, I don't like putting my hand to a plow and it doesn't move. You know me? Yeah. And, that, and after you do that so many times, it eats away at you. Because yeah. God, I know, because I know it. I know there's no way this isn't you because it keeps coming back. Like I leave writing alone and here you are again. So why, when I put my hand to this mofo cloud, it act like it, it, it act like it, it, it's not only not moving, it's stuck. <laughs> So my my mental thought for that is there has to be a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay. And if we are putting big breaks of years and months between the beginning, the middle, and the end, we holding it up. It ain't him. It's no, us. Yeah. No big that I agree with. That I agree with. So I can admit, and I, I have seen that before, like you can't be mad at the at the results you didn't get from the work you didn't put in. Okay. And I respect that. I guess the, the part that's detrimental to me is when you do put in the work and it's like, dang. But who told you that was enough? Because in your head, you said, <laughs> I met it. I met the regard and what's up? And it's like, You're right. but what if that wasn't it? You're <laughs> yeah, 100% right. And it's like, it's frustrating because, and not that anybody chose this for me because there were options, but. When you live the life of a mom and you are the sole provider, your energy, and not that it's an excuse, it's just, it is what it is. Your energy is already kind of depleted. And the little bit of energy you got, I don't mind, you don't mind putting it to the thing, but if I put it to the thing and I look up and ain't nothing changed, that too is taken away from the energy because it eats the wet. Yeah. Like, did I hear correctly? Am I really? Am I really what I thought I was? Because when you talk to other people, even I still live in Shreveport, people are just so surprised that I worked at the power center. They're like, girl, I saw your play. I read your book. Oh, my God. You didn't call the parent. And it's like, thank you. Because <laughs> it's like, I hear you, but this little roachness I'm living in, it didn't get the memo. So, like, <laughs> you know, 
when you hear the things, and it's like the people can see it, and all you see is what is. It really does kind of start to eat away at the faith because it's like, okay, did I hear correctly? Maybe that maybe that was really God speaking through my dad. Maybe I should have just been a nurse. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I got good customer service skills. I like helping people. Maybe the writing thing, that was my own, you know, maybe I'm wasting my own time with that. Like, so, you know, you, you'll start to think things like that, but then you always circle back. And it's like, it can't be a fluke because you're like the boyfriend I can't leave alone. I always find my way back to you. So, I don't know. So in the, being a creative and knowing that my ideal is to have the multiple streams of income and not a paycheck, and being in a today position where the paycheck is all right it ain't great but it's all right and um i have a co-worker who's very mentory to me and she's like hey so we gonna probably jump to this and jump to this and jump to that and i was like okay it, like just out of autopilot okay and then i stopped and was like wait a minute am i being distracted by a job because that ain't never been the goal like i was gonna put together a retirement plan i'm not excited by nobody's 401k Especially the ones for the government, and they keep sending me, well, we lost a whole bunch of money, but we're going to hope for the best. Okay. Yeah, right. Now retirement has been pushed back to 70. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all these things. So, again, and I'm very big on when we were talking about the different types of people, I'm not of the mindset that's comfortable with the idea of I need to work real hard today so that I can hopefully scrape by tomorrow. No, because that's my job. Working for the government, that's one of their only big things of you're gonna have a good retirement. I, I wanna live to I wanna live happy and, and well today though. And where's the income that creates a happy today and tomorrow? Hmm. Yes. I uh, something I'll go ahead. Oh <laughs> something that I listed as one of my negatives is being a jack of all trades, I've noticed um there are things that I can do well, but there are too many for me to be comfortable with on my list that I only know the basics in. Okay. Like, okay. I can knit and crochet, but, like, I don't think I can make this because I don't know how to switch from this stitch to this stitch and how you get that over there in this color right here. You know, but I can do it. Yeah. Okay, I think and it's, yeah. I've never had the I've never had the experience where someone is trying to make me conform to the the traditional lifestyle, probably because I did it to myself. Um, I've been surrounded by people that were like, I believe you, you could do it. And I was lacking the confidence. And now that it's it's building, I could take over the world, you know? I heard that. Yes. And then you know the thing with um well, I'll say I will say gifts versus skills. Um mm-hmm. Technically, even though someone like me needs art, like if I'm low, if I'm happy, I want to watch a good television show because I'm a storyteller. So I love good stories. Same thing with music. Like, what, however, I'm getting a good story, whether it's podcast, music, whatever, I need it to function. If tomorrow mm-hmm. they like no more of that, I'm going where it's at. But technically, it's not a needed thing, so the value of it tends to be lower. Like, let's say books. You would have to sell quite a few books. To be like, I'm quitting this job, be I'm out. Like, even through Amazon, they still take 3% and you have to wait three months. Like, if you bought my book today, I have to wait three months to get that $7. So it's not that it can't be done because people are doing it. But boy, does it take a lot of sales. You know, whereas if I'm a, and I hate to revert to hairstylist, but I just love, to me, hairstylists are artists, but technically it's a skill. Mm-hmm. And I can get two heads and make what I make now in a week, depending on what I what I did, how well I do it, and people will pay it. Like if I do it well enough, especially if I'm quick with it, or if I come to you, if I provide convenience and a service, I'm gonna stay paid. But technically, people don't need books. Like you know, even with dance, even with singing, technically that's something people indulge in outside of their needs. So it's like. That's frustrating too, because it's like what I offer, what I'm gifted to do, people don't necessarily need. Like, again. can I counter that? Can I counter it? Yeah. So I know that all industries focus on the poor because that's where most of their riches come from. 
However, when it comes to like artistic talents, whether it's singing, writing, or dancing, those things become a necessity the higher your tax bracket go. Like I must have it. I need that outlet. Okay. Right. And yeah. that same group of people are willing to pay for it. Because yeah, there's a there's a girl here that Tiffany ain't had a job in the whole seven years I've known her that I live here. And Tiffany is booked. She's connected to like the city art council. She does a mural here, there and everywhere. She'll find a, um, what's the thing? Grant. She'll find a grant and somebody will pay her to make some art or they'll pay her to teach a class or whatever the case is. I, I think a lot of times we have to learn how to sell our gift for more than just its face value. Okay. Like Raquel, uh, you dance. Mm-hmm. So step one, you dance. Step two, you can teach it. Step three, you can flip it and tell somebody it's a fitness class, or you can tell them, oh, this is gonna help you with your confidence, or it's gonna help you with your memory because you have to remember the steps. But like learning how to take the one thing and flip it is, I think, where we don't always do well in and it's because a lot of us also have the heart when you usually not all but a a great multitude of artists have really good hearts in the sense of i don't want to take advantage of somebody and when you start telling all those stories it feels like i'm taking advantage of somebody but like on the flip side if you want the money that you over there looking at such and such got such and such is doing this so tell that story well figure it out this is true absolutely so i mean there's you know tyler perry is a billionaire so it's not that people won't you know you see it that's what encourages you to keep going because i see it this isn't something i made up in my head like when i was in when i was in screenwriting uh when i was in film school me and my screenwriter had a little heart to heart and i was just telling him because he's like i think you're really talented and i'm like okay but i there's not even a black teacher here let alone a big black female teacher like and he's like, okay. He's like, either go to Atlanta. This is what he's a white guy. He's like, either go to Atlanta and stay there, but just know it's going to be like competition, or go to Atlanta, learn to need to bring it back here and build it here. And I was like, okay, you know, that's still that's still in my head, but um, I don't think he understood. But he, but what he countered me and said, and this is like a Republican white guy. He was like. As long as there's at least one doing it, there's a possibility. Like, there might not be a whole gang of y'all. You're right. Because, like, on one hand, there's, like, what? There's a Ray, Ava DuVernay, um, what's her name? White, the one that did Queen and Slim. And that's it for the women. So, I mean, like, but what he was saying was as long as there is one, it can be done. But that is such a small, crowded little room. And it's like you're trying to get into that room. And it's whew, it's work, but um, <laughs> I <it's> think <laughs> I'm not I think so. I, but it's work. <laughs> my examples be real big, and the example that I have for what you just said is Kanye. Kanye is a perfect example of I'm trying to get into their rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I feel like Issa is a decent example of like no, I'm just doing my own thing, and if you want to come to the party, I might invite you. Yeah, like, <laughs> like when I say one of my biggest inspirations is definitely either Ray. She really she did the work, like you said. She started on YouTube, you know, mm-hmm. did a Kickstarter. We like everybody in the film community is quite, quite, you know, comfortable. They know what a Kickstarter is. They know what a GoFundMe is. You know, so she she did it the old fashioned way. Everybody don't know somebody that know somebody. You know, so it's being done. But I guess sometimes it's just like. Like, am I not, am I personally not utilizing, like you said, is I'm putting my hands to the plow, but am I not either doing it enough? Am I not pushing, pushing the plow hard enough when I do do it? Like, what is the disconnect? Because there has to be a disconnect. And I think, like you said, for creatives, because we're more, I think, left brain, more mm-hmm. of the logical people tend to be right brain. And they're, they're good with marketing, analytics, you know, things like that. They might can't seem their way, like every artist you know, there's somebody usually behind the scenes that's pulling the strings, that's making them popular. They can't sing their way out of a paper bag. But they got the knowledge on how to get you in front of the right crowd, how to take this publicity and flip it. You know what I'm saying? So 
my goal, I was always hopeful that my husband would be that guy. And that's great. And that's still something to aspire for, but I'm not married. <laughs> and what if I never get married? So how do I become the bad boss B that is two in one? How do I become the talent and the brains? And so I'm in school now for marketing and I'm in the film school. But, um, and learning is a, it's an ever evolving process. But, uh, one thing I do think for the talentless people, no shade to the talentless, um, uh, like people on TikTok. Um, <laughs> or Kardashians, the people that we look at and what is it that you do again? And you're not asking to be rude. You genuinely want to know. But they have followers out the wazoo. They have brand deals out the wazoo. They got, you know, subscribers out the wazoo. But what is it that you do? But right. they, they do things I won't do. They share, yeah. their whether it be a truth or a lie, they share of themselves in a way that I'm not comfortable. I, I, there's also a podcast that cr- is created by me. Um, and I, I'm struggling to be as transparent as I want it to be. I want it to be a honest space. Yeah. But the idea of like being honest with people that I don't know to be safe is ghetto. Yeah, but like I, me and the Lord are working with it, but it's necessary. <laughs> but it's yeah. No, I tell you on that. Yeah, they let us into all of their life. We know about baby daddies, uh, crackhead ex husbands. Uh, <laughs> you know, like we know that Kim was like, "I want more kids," but who's holding them? Uh, surrogates come. Like we know a lot of their intimate business, whether it be true or curated. They let us into places that I don't think I would be comfortable having the world. Yeah, that has to be it because it's people like Beyonce with the talent, but don't let us into none of her life. She got the and, talent, but her her team is strategic to let us think we in her life because every every yeah. ten years or so they'll give us a video <laughs> and it be her <laughs> at the concert already, and she give you a ten minute. <laughs> You know, you guys, sometimes I just want a moment to myself, but I never have it. But you know, it's okay because I got my baby. I love Blue. Y'all know Blue? <laughs> and we think we know her, and that's right. enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, okay, so let me t- let's talk about this group of people. And these are the ones I call the undeniable gifts. They may not be multi talented, but they got that one gift that's undeniable. For instance, Beyonce can't act her way out of a soap opera. But ain't dancing. Can't, can't I can feel like she can dance? So the, this she, list she is said she has she has no rhythm. She said that before. Like I, I was gonna say, but this list is gonna be so opinionated <laughs> because <laughs> but if we you talk to somebody who's in the beehive, they'd be like, No, she can't. Well, no, she can dance, she can perform if nothing else. And then most and of the world is like, No, she sings well. And so check a side. Right. It's, it's too opinionated based. Art is opinionated based. Yeah, art right. is not factual. Right. Everything art from comedy down to everything. It's opinion. There are people that feel like Beyonce cannot sing. I believe they are foolish, but we can, that's that undeniable gift. Like, no shade to her whatsoever because I love Queen Bee because she really does put in the work and she doesn't have to. She could pass and dust. She's married to a billionaire, but she puts on productions and gives us the work at 30. We don't like that man. God bless him. You know what I'm saying? But um, <laughs> back in the day when she used to interview, it was giving airhead. So she's not too smart. And I'm not being shady. I'm being real. Like, she was what? She, she was she, getting airhead. I, I can sit on this podcast <laughs> even, even by myself and have articulate conversations because I'm a worldly woman that's, you know, well-rounded. Beyonce, not necessarily. She was not programmed, but all she knows, eat, sleep, breathe, is that gift. Undeniably. And it's paid off. And I think that's part of the reason why she pays us and does. Because I know that the gift is enough. Mm-hmm. You don't need to know about me and my husband because I just gave you renaissance. And, right. and guess what? She still makes the billion. That's why Kim has to give us everything because there is no gift. There's nothing. Beyonce, <laughs> I gave you renaissance. I've charted for 20 years. This is what you get. Me and my babies are staying over here, but I'm an entertainer, honey. You know, and same thing with Fantasia. Lover, color purple. Maybe we need to not do too much acting, but <laughs> one thing she can do, and this is just because I work with actors. No, but um, one thing she can undeniably do 
it seemed. That's what gave her the confidence to come down. I think they were done with American Idol, and she was like, just give me a shot. That's how undeniable her gift was, and she won the whole thing. So, I mean, those type of people... I feel like I don't want to say have it easier, but when you when you got that undeniable, oh, that Whitney Houston, what that, oh, Fantasia is an example of it's not easy. When I her easy. undeniable gift had to stand against Simon saying, "But you're ugly." Right, <laughs> my gift is so good that that don't even matter. That's what I'm saying. Like it didn't matter to us. Simon said, "Go fix it." <laughs> it has to be pretty because there is no gift. Honestly, if Beyonce was not cute, she really could still do well. She might not be as big, but like those people with those that one gift, there's like, dang, that boy can blank. For me, prodigies maybe, those type of people. I've known since I was a child, this thing here is what I do. And so that kind of at least gives those type of people guidance and drive because even without training, et cetera, et cetera, I do this one thing well. Nobody's ever told me otherwise. Like, I got to get it. So... When you have multiple things, and maybe you don't, maybe you can sing, but not as good as that under, like the the undeniable person. There's no denying that thing. I can kind of carry a tune, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, but I can't write, and I can, you know. So it's like for me, they have it easier, not in the sense that their path is easy, but Fantasia can't even read, and there's no Good sense. She could not read. Then you don't know what she can do today. Ooh, artists are so shady. Artists are shady, and I love when we're shady in our lane no. because you know how, like, you see something in your field and you like. I mean, it's but, cool but or whatever. Long short, her gift was so phenomenal. She didn't have to be educated. That's what I'm saying. That's like the gift is so powerful. Right. Other stuff don't even matter. But when you're multi gifted, and maybe all of them aren't as up to here as that one person's gift, it's harder for you because. Okay, you don't like this one. Let me try this one. Whatever. So then people think, A, you're all over the place. And that's not a, is that a compliment? Is it? I think it's, so that's the same thought that you're having. I've always been perceived as the opposite. I've always been perceived as, oh, she's willing to try. Okay. When I moved to here, okay. Like when I moved here, people were like, are you trying to move across overseas by yourself? Who says this? I'm trying to get an apartment. <laughs> but like for whatever reason, they perceive me as fearless. Person. Okay. And it's like being in the body of me, it's like, no, there's lots of fear here. Sometimes I'm able to fight it and go forth, but yeah, it's it's the perception. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay, and that's how I look at people who every time I see this guy, he might be trying something new. I'm like, oh, he's he by any means necessary. He gonna try. He gonna get it. But to the logical, the logical group, and they mean well. You look all over the place. You look scatterbrained to them. You look unstable. When are you going to choose something? Weren't you just doing this? Did Have you, you ever know? seen the? <laughs> there's a movie and I forgot which movie it is um, this man is like a kindergarten teacher he's a kindergarten art teacher and the movie is about art and he's looking at the kindergarten's art work and whoever it is that comes in they're trying to critique the children and he's like no they're geniuses and we're catching them before we put all these rules on them like that level of freedom and understanding that art is so and I say arts for all of it. Art yeah. is, is again, it's not fact. It's perception. Yeah. Like the different styles of dance. There's going to be a version of dance that people are like, what? Crumping. Who? What are you doing? Oh, my God. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Um, the movie Sing 2. Sing 2 is a perfect example of um, the dancing and how this man did well. However, comma, but this person who was a studious in this other version was like, no, you're horrible, Johnny. Johnny went and found him a muse and the, him and the muse got it done. It's, it's a lot of perception and we and how dare we let people who are fear. Cause, so I wrote a book called uh, The Artist's Way and it talks about how technically all of us are artists. Everybody. I have that book it's, and I haven't started it yet. Girl, girl, start it. I haven't finished it yet. When I say it's so good, it's so good. 
no, no, and no, I no. haven't finished it. So in the artist way, she talks about how all of us are artists. However, some of us are in environments where it can be cultivated. And then some of us are in environments where we're told you need to be an EMT. You need to get a real job. You need to do da, 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 da. And so they live their lives with all of this fear because whomever told them consistently that they were doing life long instead of just letting them do life. Yeah. Like how Ooh. dare I let someone who isn't an artist or a painter tell me I'm painting wrong. Yeah. When uh, and the more I explore poetry, the more I'm able to fully express myself instead of like, oh no, it has to be this many beats per minute and rhymes per minute and did it. And, 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 and how dare, <laughs> how, I, how dare I let somebody who your job as a mathematician tell me my poem is wrong? Go away. Right. right. And yeah. the and more you lean into your gifts, your confidence to say, go away. Because how did, who are you? That's the one. And what's crazy is when I got pregnant with Janelle. I don't know if we can remember this. She was probably one of the only people that was like, girl, don't, you know, don't just throw your gifts to the side because you're a mama now, you know, you still can do those things. Now, I'm, I'm glad to have had that because, first of all, like you said, this generation of parents is a little bit different. <laughs> no, <sorry>. uh-huh. <laughs> it's a little bit different from our parents, you know, so, um, but also we're 200 years shy of slavery. So you want, yes, you want your child to get a stable job, benefits, be able to stand up on their own. That's the, that is the goal. So really the only people I had that were like, no, even noticed that I was right really were my grandmothers. They were the ones that were like, one day she's going to make some money for this family and ooh, she's right about now. And my parents were more so trying to raise me. So mm-hmm. when they passed away, and they passed away right at the cusp of womanhood. So like 16 and 17, like back to that. Mm-hmm. So okay, now I'm like at the edge of womanhood <laughs> and my cheerleaders are gone. Like, okay, I'm going to get out of high school. Like, And then, like I said, before life gets hold of you, so now I'm in high school. I'm at Southern um, because I went to Upper Bound and they was like, you need to do something. So I'm at Southern and you know, oh, this dude want to talk, this dude want to talk, this dude want to talk. And if I could go back when I say, I just would have been locked in and no matter what this looked like, I'm, I'm getting an agent and I'm becoming a screenwriter. But also, you're still discovering yourself. Because at that age, I wanted to be a fashion designer. You know what I'm saying? So, like, but, um, and I did go away to school for fashion design for one semester. Yeah, and I, I remember that. And got pregnant. <laughs> so, what I wish would have happened is, some kind of way, we got the money, and we're like, you're going to go back. But, life be life. Like, they wanted $7,000. I don't come from riches, so, Southern University it is. And, <laughs> And I was like, well, that's that's a wrap. They don't teach fashion design here. And what, like, in eighth grade, I decided, because originally I wanted to be a singer. <laughs> in eighth grade, one day, I remember thinking, oh, holy shit, you know, I'm about to start high school. I got to get, what am I going to do for real? And I was looking in the back of a Seventeen magazine, and I was like, okay, I saw the fashion school in Dallas. I was like, I can still draw, because I was just a drawing fool. Like, I could just draw really well. I was like, I can still draw with that. I mean, it wasn't a heart's desire, but at least I could still be in art. So when mm-hmm. I stepped out to do it and it was slapped away like a basketball and I had to come back to Shreveport, you know, with a tail coming leg, I'm like, man, that didn't really go like I planned. So what do you mean by slapped away like a basketball? Because I went there for one semester like- and then they was like, sis, you are out of state student. You gotta pay out of state fees. I'm like, hold up, I'm gonna three hours away. Wow. <laughs> they said to hell with that and send me back to Shreveport. Because they was like, okay. Sorry, family. We did try to scrounge the money up. What we thought was the money, mm-hmm. and we paid them what we thought was owed. And then they doubled back and was like, "Oh, there was a emergency loan. You got to pay most of that back before you come back." And they was like, "We ain't got it." So I mean, they did try. I think the first thing was like a maybe a seven hundred, a little bit over seven hundred dollars. We were able to pay that, but then when they came with that seven thousand dollar loan, I was like, "Ooh, forgot about that." Oh, dang! Y'all need that all at once. Like I can't. Nope. So attempts were made, but it's like I'm I'm back here again. You know, like 
so much for that. Maybe once again, and you start hearing those voices. Did I think correctly? Maybe that maybe I was dreaming too big, you know, maybe I was doing too much. You know? I have a question. So and it's the journey that I'm currently on, but my question for you is do you like who you are today? I there were things I would have done differently. So and if it's a yes, then all of that stuff made you who you are. If it's a no, then you gotta work on liking who you are today. Yeah. I mean because we can't change it. We don't serve a God that has the time machine. When you say who you are, what does that entail? What does it mean to you? Who are you? You asked the question. So I'm asking like when you say, do, you like, do, I, do I like my personality? Do I like my gift? Of course I do. Do I like the fact that I'm not living my purpose and that my gift isn't making room? No. So it all depends According on- to who? Like but I think there is the <laughs> So I think two things are happening. Like some of your conversation is artistic and some of your conversation is still very logical where I did it wrong. I need a real job. I need da 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 versus fully artistic. And I just need income. I need the money to be here so I can do what I want to do. That's, that's what I need. I need the money to exist for these bills so that I can have the freedom to wake up at 1203 because I want to. And you know what? I have to go down on my thing that some of us creatives are a little bit closer to one than the other. Like some of us are a little more, you know, entrepreneurial, and some of us. And I admit, I'm still a little bit logical. Like once I looked out for the film job after about two months, and you know, the Trump check stopped coming, the you know, the, the bills are due. It was like, all right, well, if nothing else, I know I can. The Carlson world. I've already called since I was 21. So that's what I, I lean on. And not necessarily because I wanted to, but responsibilities. Like, so a lot of my classmates, they are still doing their film thing, but also they were fresh out of high school and they did not have children. And not. Mm-hmm. And that, that's a big deal because I have friends that are doing like they doing nails and they booming and they popping, but they also have husbands and extra incomes in the so home. Those things make a difference. Yeah. Like, if they were up to me, girl, I I wouldn't get up until twelve. I don't know. <laughs> like what? But so I think my logical brain wants to be the artist at first, and then the logical part of me is like. How do I make this just an income? I don't want to do it all the time. I know that I'm going to lose interest in it. Uh, but how do I establish something that continues to make money? Because, again, the goal is to have the money so yeah. that I can do what I want to do. But yeah. And even that, like, like this, even that takes resources. Like, you can write a book. My Angelo books this son. She's been dead for 10 years. So you can do, you can, like she, like you said, you can dance in a video, you can go on tour with Beyonce, whatever, rack up cash from that, put it in stocks, and be good to go. You can do that, but even that takes resources. That's the part. It's not that it can't be done. Everything, we're as, as, as artistic as we are, the money is still green. And it still, it still does make a difference. Like, yes, of course, if money did not matter, but it does. You want to advertise, you want to pay for ads, you want to get in front of people. If you don't have, like we said, that panache or that skill that will get people to watch your TikToks, et cetera, et cetera, you better have somebody for advertising or you better know somebody. And even they, because they have the gift, they want to be paid. Like if you're good, if you are good um, at TikTok and you have a certain amount of followers, you pay me $2,000 and I will plug your book. So even that does take resources. So, yeah. 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 I think I have a whimsical trust in the artistic community. Um, I think it's possible to create clusters that created artists like Chance the Rapper, No Name, yeah. because they came out of a cluster of like, oh, we just kids that are artistic and ta da, look at it, it worked out. You do this little piece, I do this little piece, I do this little piece. Um, I think. I remember coming out of high school. I will, I'm a name drop. I'm not going to name drop. I remember coming out of high school and I was excited because like, oh, OK, OK. So we're going to have a fashion designer. That's me. We're going to have a lawyer. That's this person. We're going to have a uh, eye doctor. OK, OK, OK. I've always wanted that circle of like, these are our skills that we bring. 
Yeah. And we barter these skills. Like we sell them everywhere else, but we barter them right here to get the needs met. Um, something that uh, a podcast that used to exist that looks the way that I want my podcast to look is called The Grapevine. And I love that. Uh, what is her name? I forgot her name, but she was able to like just gather her professional friends. My girl had a couple lawyers. She had a couple therapists. She had people that was just in the church, used to be in the cult. Like, and she just sat them at the table and they had a conversation about black culture. Yeah. And how these things, and they were able to bring expertise to it. Yeah. I, I, sure. Like, even now, I got people. One thing I can say, and I'm glad you mentioned that, is whenever, um, whenever I want to do a project, whenever I want to do something, there's an actor I can call. Even in Shreveport, even if I, you know, so, and you build that little community along the way. Like, these are people that just believe in Quentin Lyric. I don't even pay you to. So, I mean, that is there, too. And we can come together and put stuff together. But, again, even to get it to the masses would we'll take resources. But, it, it's, you know, there's always, because, like, it's a starter. <laughs> so, I mean, it can be done. But it's like, it just, it can be a lot. What's the difference between Issa and her uh, weird black girl crowdfunding and then it popping off? What's the different? There's a, a musical artist, La Russell, right now. La Russell is making money as if he mainstream, and he don't he ain't signed to nobody but himself. He just shouted out his um marketing lady. She said he said she approached him. He had a couple thousand on like Instagram or so, and she didn't got him to the point where he got a couple mil. He shouted her out in the song was like, "Don't nobody work as hard as me." That level of synergy can do anything. And, I, and I'm and i not saying that it don't take us having a job to make sure that our bills are paid, to make sure that our lifestyle standards are, uh, you know, still where they need to be. I just, I think, I don't think in that it can't happen. I think it hasn't happened because me and Jesus and my personal, like, dedication to it. Yeah. Okay. And I, I agree with that, like, Toya and I have been kind of discussing a book she's been reading talking about um, generational curses and how some of the stuff that keeps showing up in your family, like poverty, could be the result of some witchcraft or voodoo that was placed on your family 200 years ago. And you just, the prayer and fasting that it would take to get rid of it just never happened. So I guess my question then would be like, where do you draw, like, how do you know where the issue is when it's happening like is this not happening because a like you said i'm not putting my hand to the plow i'm not doing the work that's required with the faith or when you do put your hand to the plow and you are doing the work and it's still not working is this the result of something that is out of my control that's spiritual that no matter what i do it's there because of a generational curse like it's like where do you know where you fall I so as believers we always have the equation of Christ in our equation and as much as we are from Louisiana as much as the everybody in the world believe in crystals and astrology and ABC and D because I'd be heavy on an Aquarius you know what I'm saying like I'm not outside of the the the, the scenario uh, but as much as I partake in those thoughts i feel like my belief in god supersedes it all right so you can't have anything you can't put a root on me even my one of my favorite scary movies is the skeleton key 75 percent of that movie was uh convincing the people that it was real it will not work on you unless you think it's real Hmm. i gotta make you believe you gotta buy in it and say you got some power for it to be real and i think when it comes to like the generational curses those are just the the bad habits and the fears. And a lot of us are afraid to push past comfort. Yeah. Like, it's been a lot of, like, I, this season, my indicator that I'm doing the new thing has been, am I comfortable? Yeah. Do I, I have an autopilot answer? Like, if somebody asks me something or if this situation is presented, I'm heavy on it. I need to stop and think. 
because I don't I can't give you the autopilot answer because that's for the old person. I went to a um a Harry Potter uh exhibit. Technically, technically, I paid these people fifty dollars for a photo, a selfie room for Harry Potter. But they advertise it as, oh, magic at play. And then you get there and it's just a bunch of, you want to take a picture? You want to take a picture? Hey, I know you paid to get in here, but at the end, you want to buy these pictures? I'm not I said, now look. And it was interesting because I wasn't engulfed the way that I would have been years ago. As I was coming back from it, I was praying and I was like, God, it's interesting that you're giving me a season of being who I really am. And all of the things that I used to be interested in and that I used to keep myself from, and I you can't do that, and you cannot do this. All of the no, you're like I'm exploring those things now, and it's like I don't care about that. Yeah, okay. It, but I, I don't, I don't think that there's anything that can keep me from what's for me. I outside of me, outside of me, I can choose to not. Okay. Okay. So I will add to that. Um, if you can put your hand to the plow repeatedly, but if you're putting your hand to it the wrong way, it's still not going to move. I think lack of knowledge, and I think that's in the Bible. Yes, uh, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. I remember before I moved out here, I entered a BET script contest, and of course, <laughs> it wasn't in nobody's correct format or nothing. Even though it was a good ass story, you know, it was um, for a show the Call Center Chronicles. And I sent it to BT, and of course, I did not win. I don't even think I got past the front desk. But it wasn't that I didn't try. It wasn't that I didn't believe mm-hmm. in myself. That script looked like somebody who's not, what, girl, what is this? And then when I went to school and saw how scripts were supposed to look, now I'm feeling embarrassed. It's like, well, damn. So I do believe that faith without works is dead, but also faith without works and knowledge. Like, if you really believe in your gift, are you willing to invest in it? Because when you walk in those rooms, especially um, if you don't know what you're talking about. How you on the recording saying <laughs> they know what this means? You might want to say it. You might want to say it. God bless. <laughs> if you, like one thing I remember that was crazy to me because we love Tyler Perry. Like, like I said, back in Shreveport, that was the compliment I would always get. In film school, when, when Tyler Perry was mentioned, it was never in a positive light and not in no hateracious way. They would point out how he doesn't use proper camera angles, how the light. However, is. but it's still hateracious way, just because you're saying it from I'm the standard. Because yeah, think about that. how, from a overall cultural way, we will talk about somebody and make it seem like, oh no, I'm not being a hater. I'm just keeping yeah, it yeah, professional. Yeah. Professional is your definition, your standard. Like, because we would speak because they spoke highly of Spike Lee and Spike Lee went to school for film. No shade, but Tyler Perry winged it. You know, he learned now it worked. It worked, but there are no Oscar noms. There are no Emmy noms. You know, he's put out hundreds and become a billionaire. Now that is success. But and I also will not let the nominations be my my yes. uh yes, no, maybe so. Because we know as as people of color. There are lots of shows and movies that are out there that is bomb. It's classic. My kids got to see this. Yeah. It taught me so much, and nobody ever better than I did. And that's their business. Yeah, that too. But we can, like even a running joke amongst even us, the blacks, is the we mm-hmm. is <laughs> yes, God, yes, God. It's comical, and it's like here you are, like with um, I think it was called Grace on the Fire or something like that, which is. Which I love that he tries different things that's out of the box. I absolutely love him for that. Who he be trying? We're laughing because that wig on that villain looked like a chia pet. When had you went to school for this, or at least you know would hear people? I can tell it's very. He does what worked for him, and anything that won't grow, well, he's been growing. But you can like. But my so I'm doubling back to the idea of mm-hmm. oh he doesn't have any but you know huh? where's the team you know what I'm saying if, I think if he had a team if he would have came in with a team kind of like Adam Sandler if he would have came in with a team that he was willing to listen to instead of only thinking he knows best I think he would be taken more seriously as far as 
his crap. Like, of course, as a regular person watching the film, it's either funny or it's not, it's either good or it's not. But to people in cinema, it's like that lighting is awful. This set looks really cheap. Those wigs are god awful. And the, the script is kind of off. Like, but I mean, that's just. But according to yeah. their standard, according right. to their standard that has always been presidents that we've taken as professional. Maybe, or just learn the crap. And if their standards are what it is, and, still and their standards are getting in their room. Yeah. It's Kanye and Adidas. You want to be Kanye? I don't. I as much as I love him, like he one of my cousins. I don't want to be him. I don't want to be Kanye. But uh, no, no, I want to be Kanye. Um, but this conversation about sounds like Houseway when Sway was like, "You ain't got to get in their room. You ain't got to do it that way." And Houseway, why well, do I do it? How you don't have the answers. This is that conversation. Yeah, Where I'm like, you don't have to be in their room. You don't have you to. No, you can build your own room, but why not the room be up to standard? Why not? And not because not the standard, good. You can still be quality and black. Just like most of our hairstylists, you know, don't go and get the license. Don't go because they're good at it. But if you take the craft seriously, why not? One thing I love about my sister. And she don't be caring what nobody say. In fact, when she first started, I was like, what the fuck is an esthetician? And I meant well. <laughs> I was like, black people don't do that. That good as she didn't listen to us because we all were saying the same thing. Black people don't do that. Girl, you, you, she was in nursing school. Stick with nursing. And so even after she got popular and did it well, since nobody else really did it, she could have done it raggedy and it would have been okay. But she would still go to Vegas and go to these classes. Go, go here and go to this course. You know, she would still refine the gift, even though she was already considered really good. Because no matter what I need my skill set to be, you can come in here and say I'm ghetto. You can sound whatever. You can say I'm too black, but you can't say that I didn't bring good work. However, in, in, in using your sister as an example, Carmen would also leave and go to Southern classes. Carmen would also have a pink wall that she didn't need. The, the pink wall wasn't necessary, but it was necessary. Right. And I feel like that's that moment where I'm building my own standard. Right. Yeah. And I, the her, no one's saying no one's saying don't be your ghetto unapologetic self, but let that work be professional. Like Courtney Barrett, we we still but pro professional is professional the. For example, yeah. um, we've worked in call centers. There's a professional tone to answering the phone. Yeah. There are professional words to answering the phone. Black people code switch. Didn't we a couple of years ago decide we were going to stop? Uh, okay. I remember being a poet trying to find my voice because I'm so used to putting on that voice. The yeah. girl who just came to my door, she was uh, recording me once. I got a recording of us and she's like, that's not your voice. I don't know how to turn it off. Yeah. I get that it's not who I talk to you and all the times, but it's because I am programmed mm -hmm. to be professional according to somebody else's standards. When in reality, professional is a problem solver and it is pleasant. Okay. It is not. I had a, one of my coworkers was mad because I was like, he gonna come get you or he'll come grab you. He'll, he'll be right out. He'll come grab you. Why do you say that? <laughs> because it's effective communicating. He comes and grab you. Right. So let like, me do I mean? Thing. Do not be your black self. I'm talking about the skill. The work you put out should be refined and it should look like you know what you are doing. I am not saying. And that according that to the know. audience of Tyler Perry, he know what he's doing. According to the audience, yes. And then he got in, his his work is then scrutinized in a school full of white people that have a white people standard, that have a white people budget, that have a white people palette to um sal what's the word the, to to you know to salivate their white people palette according to their white people palette it ain't it. Another example of that is uh the Miss Pat show. She talked about how her pilot was in front of somebody white and he was like uh uh. And then the four or five white black people on set were like, she killing me. And she was able to get put in a black environment and the black people appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that. you, I mean, you I don't uh, again. I'm confused because, like, we was, when they spoke on Robert Townsend, it was praise. When they spoke on Spike Lee, it was praise. So it's not a, oh my God. Like, it but is, also, if we can't learn, we can't grow. <laughs> I, but I love Townsend, but he's very white proxy. Who? 
Mr. Townsend. Oh, well, I mean, I love him. There's a lot of people who don't like him, but I do. Oh, no, that's I that's like Meteor Man. Man. I like Ducky. One of my <laughs> but I mean, but I they're like, it's, it's like, I don't want to get it misconstrued. I'm not saying tone down your blackness, but also take the craft serious. No matter what the craft is, keep it black, but keep it professional. And I don't mean cold switching, you know, I mean, I don't care how country she is. When I go there, I get good service and I get good food, so I'm going to keep him. But if I come there, you can talk as properly as you like, but if you're rude and the food ain't good, I won't be back. <laughs> so that's but that's you. There are those that will. Like, it's the standard. It's always opinion. Really? Well, I mean, to each his own, but all I'm saying is I want us, the creators in the black community, to refine the skills. Just being Absolutely. It is not enough. If you really take the craft serious, learn the craft. Don't just cut hair at your at your homeboy's basement with what your daddy taught you. Go to these conventions, go to barber school, go to guys, refine it. So that way you can charge. The reason my sister can charge so much is because she got three and four plaques on her wall that say, I wait here, here, and here. I'm not no YouTube artist, baby. You can call <laughs> So now me on the other hand, and people are like, why you don't do the makeup? Baby, all I got is YouTube. Like you're not gonna get me cussed out by Miss Sally. <laughs> but if I took it, but can I take it seriously? I could. I could, but that would just be too much time. But like she's always So my example my flip example of that, because for whatever reason I'm the devil's advocate, is Thomas Adriana. I don't think Adri got a cosmetology license. Adri been on YouTube since the beginning. She gave us the Adri Bob. She gave us the Adri Micros where you do your perimeter and you throw the uh we the tracks in the back. And currently is uh Senate, she's I think she said it starts on like the 14th. She's being uh nominated for like entrepreneur makeup artist of the year of the this, that, and the third. Like sis do everybody makeup. Okay. Sis supposed to been a lawyer. But you know, life do what he wants to. We go where the money reside. Where the money reside. Where the money. But reside. I will say this: <laughs> there are exceptions. We there are people who don't like Tyler Perry, film school, and look at him now. He's an exception. Let's be honest. But is he an exception? Because we started this conversation with he think he an exception. Yeah. I mean, what I'm saying is, has, we can't deny the success. He's a storyteller. That's his undeniable gift. However, so is success the the measuring tool? It, it depends on what is success to, to you. For me, I want to put positive Afro art into the African American community. If that was his goal, he has reached it and surpassed it. So who mm-hmm. cares what the the Emmy say or the Oscar say? But don't get mad when they don't invite you in if you are too big to even take a filmography class. If that's beneath you, then stay where you are. Because remember, you didn't want to refine your gift because you already got blackness. And anti black is going against you. And we know you have to work twice as hard. So your stuff has to be twice as professional if you want to get to that level. But if you're fine with just the chicken circlet, then that's fine because it's paying you. I mean, I'm I that is my goal. I remember one time, I'm not gonna say no names because this is my homegirl. She uh she was one of the only white people at my place. And she was like, um, where did white people? I said that's not my target audience. And I, I meant that, and I still do. Like, this, if you go to the Courtney Lynn website, even in the, this is for black, this is for niggas over here. So if, uh, <laughs> so if God forbid the crossover never happens, that wasn't my goal anyway. You know. I think a perfect example of that is No Name. No Name stopped music because she said he's white people going to stop coming to my concerts and these niggas though. And I'm like, on one hand, I get you, sis. On the other hand, the and the famous words of Ari Lennox, get this paper no, so that no. you can live this life. Yeah. That must still be a little more successful. You see, you came back to music, right? Uh-huh. Thank you. <laughs> I respect it. I ain't gonna lie. You know, my target audience is this, but if you want to come in and have a seat and don't touch nothing, by all means, did I get your $10 at the door? Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're not gonna yeah. come home to make you comfortable, though. <laughs> Oh, I love that we're friends for a reason. Cause yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. my audience was so hood, and I'm fine with that. 
Yeah, she was like they were how they sure was. I love this. I know I'm doing a good job. That's what, yes, I like my audience. See, we back to Tyler Perry and his singers. See, Tyler did a good job. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. He was for the people, by the people, and the people approved. Nobody asked you to come over here, um, Timothy, and critique him. This was for the people. By in the words of Kevin Faith, it's for black people anyway. Yes, yes. Salons. So this is fit for us. Yes. So if that is the goal, by all means, yes. But refine the gift, y'all. Go ahead. You might absolutely be don't be basic. I was one of the oldest people in class and one of four black girls. We used to hang together because mm-hmm. there weren't many of us. But I'm here to refine this gift. I've been a storyteller all my life. Now I got to see how I get my script into the hands of people who want to pay me. And if I got to come mm-hmm. here to it, with nothing to show you for it, I'm here. But, um, even, but even Are you going to try to connect with that little 50 cent situation? You know what? That, the resume is ready. Like I said, the artistic resume has been ready since 2021. She said. <laughs> my, my baby JJ, he in his little private school again, high school, but if someone is either gravely ill or I get a full-time gig at the 50 Cent Studio, I, you know, those are my two reasons for moving back. <laughs> if anybody's dying, if 50 Cent ain't call me, I'll be out here. <laughs> but if he call, and I'm putting in the red button. And if he call, we might not be right in street, but we might be in Frierson. Because <laughs> I didn't got used to driving 30 minutes for everything. So, you know, we might be in Keyville, but we'll be out there. Yeah, yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, hmm. I see him. I'm looking at the. Oh, y'all, uh, y'all want black shit. Oh, say less. <laughs> I remember uh, when I first moved here and I was whining about not having all of the connections and access that I had in Shreveport. Yeah. Because, you know, we knew everybody. I had never, I, I told my friend, and I brag on this all the time, I had never stood in the line at a club until I was 30. Like, I always knew somebody. And the one time it happened, well, it didn't happen multiple times now. But that first time I was confused, like, what is this? Y'all don't know nobody? Like, why are we still here? I don't understand. And it was beautiful, like acknowledging that I know my city that well. And I'm in position to rebuild those connections here. Okay. And I know people vaguely, but like, I really need to like, I got to. So, oh, that's what I was going to mention. So a guy that I used to listen to all the time, Eric Thomas, easy, easy talks about how like you have to work it and make it look sweet. And then your team comes. I need to be working it and I got to be doing it. And making it look like, yeah, this is where it's at. Yeah. And then if you build it, they will come. Yeah. I am blessed. So like I said, even out here, and maybe, you know, that that I like that you mentioned that. That's a blessing. Because, like, out there and out here, it started, like, I was like, man, all my actors out there. Like, all the comedians I know, they out there. And now I'm trying to do a short film or whatever. I don't know no actors out here. And they probably want to be paid. And so, lo and behold, there's some hungry people out here, you know. So, I met them, and it's nice that that's there. I, I felt like I don't give them enough to do. So, then you end up losing the connection because they want to go over to work at. But, um, okay. That made me, okay. Mm. But we got to be working. That's that plow. Like, we push it until it's uncomfortable. We push it. Like, even if it was exercise, we get to our normal plateau and be like, all right, God. So, that was the good for today. And he's like, I need a little more, just a little more. Mm. And we got to figure it out. That like, we got to do it and it figure it out. Cool. And um, th- sometimes I have to be willing that just because I am good at a thing doesn't mean that I don't need structure or organization. Like, you don't realize how hard it is to write a script or a book until you sit down and really write one. Because I was thinking the other day, like, I've technically been a self published author for a decade. Period. It's still not a, you know, a full income, and I've only written five books. And so I, was, I think I was talking to Toya, and she was like, "Well, girl, that's a lot." No, it's not, because there are girlies that crank out thirty books a year. What am I doing? But it's not. It's like, but on the other hand, I am doing it, but it's at a much slower pace because, whew, you know, that that plate be full, and it's like, you are, like I said, the energy left over be that much, and then you have to pull it together a story. Like that's a mental work, you know. And if yeah. you, know, you know, my therapist told me when I was trying to learn a new skill, I was working on stocks, and um, 
for like a week. I just I couldn't. And I was when I hit her up, I was like, I just have been so drained. I haven't even went over stock this week. And she was like, That's because your brain is overwhelmed. You got all this stuff going on. There's no room for it. Where are the stocks gonna go? You got this, you got that, you got the kid in private school, where's it gonna go? And I don't think people I think when people are not creative, they do not understand. It's work. I know it's a pleasure to you. You just sitting there watching a dance. You just sitting there watching, you know, a performance or a spoken word. But even to sit down and crank that poem out, that person might have to dig through so many emotions, like had to go putting the words together to rhyme. It is work. It is mental work. Like this ain't Dr. Seuss. What do you mean? Like this is work. And I think sometimes the logical people do not get that. So well, why don't you just write another one? Baby. <laughs> it took me a year. <laughs> like the guy who comes in with the HBCU magical book, he said it took him 14 years to write that book. And I remember thinking, yeah. I can relate to it, but now you in their world. And in their world, the lots of people got deadlines. So what's mm-hmm. going Because So I have two things. Yeah. The first one is there's an interview. I think it's a Breakfast Club interview with Ryan Leslie. He talks mm-hmm. about our minds. Like I, before this interview, I didn't know him like that. I didn't know the song. I didn't know da 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 da. But me. after the interview, I was like, I fool with him the long way. So one of the things, because he drops a lot of gems in this interview, but one of the things he talked about is that our minds are computers. You have a capacity, and you know how like a lot of times we'll get overwhelmed. And we will say, Oh, I need a nap. I need a da 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 da. No, you don't need a reset. You need to take something off your plate. Yes. Who are your plate is full. Take something off so that you can have room. How? Uh, <laughs> because there's something in there. Like, for, for, for example, friend, 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 ladies in my love with my heart of hearts. Um, something that, like, you know, oh, this is going to sound like such a judgment, and it is not intended to be judgment, but something that is on your plate is like, you be dedicated to, I need to binge watch something. Who got it? What are we watching? I watch it while I'm at work. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But if I'm saying take something off your plate so that you can have room for something else, that's a that's a moment of you simply consuming versus a moment where you could be producing. Okay. And that is and that is true. You know. Because own- God be getting me together because I consume. Consuming is easy. That's true. As we just said, you just said it. Like consuming is easy. Scrolling TikTok yeah. is easy. Critiquing because I am a creative. Like mm, you could have did it another way. I remember when I had the smart Eureka moment that like most of these TikToks were staged because I was like, how you just happen to get your phone out at the right time? How you got two camera angles and she didn't see the camera supposedly? And it was a baby. This, this is staged. Calm down. You're right. And again, that's the moment of like, I don't want to give them that much access in my life. I do not. But I'm going to have to figure out something. If Even if I don't want to give you that much access in my life, I need to be intentional and consistently intentional with what access I am giving you. Okay. That's fair. Like if I'm going to give them poems all the time or if I'm going to give them stories all the time, do that all the time. I'm not asking you to let them into your private conversations with the homies. But do that. All the time. But it's the consistency for me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's those cool. that yeah. So that's yeah. the only thing that I would be comfortable with saying that's like the unknown generational curse. Cause like break through it. Go through it. Yeah. We know what the problems are. When are we gonna get to the solutions? Yeah. And I'll be setting myself up for failure. I'll come up with, okay, well, I'm going to do this this many times a week. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then sitting there doing nothing just so I can be mad at myself in the next moment. Who is ghetto? Well, I mean, you had a year. So, like, you and my sister, y'all y'all had a year. So, understandable. And I did try, and I'm not shaming you at all. Like, I did try to, you know, hey, friend, we writing. How's the writing going? And I'm used to just giving you what I need. You know, just, hey, how's the writing going? I think I think I would have to um, I'd have to let you in more for it to be effective. Damn. (laughs) And that's the truth, because I am in being in the season of really learning who I am, uh, taking off the mask, taking off of the the weights, taking off the unnecessary obligations. 
in all of that, I'm noticing that I don't let people in. And if you're not in, that conversation don't mean nothing. And also, so what I was going before I rented and forgot is that I'm so used to being the helper and not the helped. Hmm. God is showing me how to receive help, but yeah. it's foreign. I'm so used to helping. Mm-hmm. I'm so used to a conversation starting. Like there's people in my life that if they talk to me, it's because they want something from me. Mm-hmm. And because I'm aware of that, it's a guard that immediately their presence brings a guard. Mm-hmm. And instead of me just living in that, I'm having conversations of, hey, so, you know, thank you. We can do something else or we can do nothing, but, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I admit, one of my actors I met out here, he used to kind of be on me and not necessarily be on me, but he would, we did season one of the Couch Chronicles and he would be that one that's like, hey, or, you know, hey, season two, hey, season And it got a little annoying because like, bruh, do you not know that I got this, that I just lost my job, that I got like, but, you know. I don't think people mean bad when they do that. It's sometimes, and even if you don't follow up, I think it's kind of like God reminding you, despite what's on your plate right now, you're still corny lyric. Even if you don't crank out season two, don't forget there are people that believe in your dream. There are people that are depending on you. If also, the person to put them on, you got to get up. So, I mean, <sighs> yeah. So, we trust God that nobody is left behind, step one. Um, but also when it comes to like, we are aware that there must be a beginning, a middle and an end, right? You started the couch chronicles, the couch chronicles was in my head while we were talking and I was like, what about that? But it had a start, but it, there was no push to give it a middle. And even if you start it again, it's going to be the start and you're going to have to have patience with that thing, like a child that this is the start again. And then being mindful and truthful with yourself that if you pull them same people back in, you are um, potentially creating a cycle of I do or don't want to deal with her because she starts stuff. Well, damn, I don't want that. Because Big Dog, you had a you had the other podcast, the green one where you did the movies and stuff. Like I, 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 I guess you're right. So, I do this is that. <laughs> Courtney is. So not Courtney. Uh, <laughs> Carmen is our example of you can follow your dream and get this money. Jordan is our example of baby, you can do anything. Because my friend has written books. My friend has put out a coloring book. My friend has written plays, put on plays. Um, my friend has been a recording artist. I remember trying to be my friend's manager and she decided that one of her needs for me as her manager, as her talent manager, is what that I needed kids? to babysit children. <laughs> Ma'am, yeah. no ma'am. But that was life. Student recorder aware. I tried to bring JJ to the recording studio once and it was not. Nah. All I'm saying, there were other options on the table. I get that we be looking at the problem and like this the only option I see. <laughs> no ma'am. Ah, no ma'am. And I'm I'm gonna definitely make my way back to music. Even if I don't sing, I, I mostly just wanna write music. Because I was like, I was good at that. I still got two notebooks full of songs I just wrote. And um, when we worked at the call center, like when I was pregnant with Jace, I was cranking out songs. That's when I did Louisiana Love was when I was pregnant with Jace. And here he is, about to be 11. So, okay. It's just, it's finding the energy and staying consistent. And like you said, respect the middle. Keep showing up. Like, I keep coming back to this podcast. This podcast is five years old. Like, I think I did my first episode December 31st of 2018. And I did like four episodes last year and like six episodes year before. But I, I do come back, but it's like, imagine if I really stuck with it, if I really showed up more than four times a year. And not that it's not understandable, because this shit is hard. Like, single mother is hard. <laughs> That's why I asked you to be a sitter, <laughs> because it is hard. But it's here and it's all like, and it's no surprise, and I still have the gifts. And, I would and you remember how you made the statement of like, if you got so many followers, you can get syndicated. You can get uh, pay me to make me say something on your thing. Da, 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 da. All yeah. those things happen in the middle and the later end, even though we are whining about not having the fruits of the beginning. The beginning has fruits also, but like we can get where we're going, but we got to get where we're going. You're right. And like, I, 
I just posted something the other day that was like, if you feel like you're behind, keep in mind that the last thing to grow is the fruit. And like you hear those kissy things and you understand them, but when you are actually living it, like I just said, it's been a decade, like <laughs> since I wrote the Mary Man. It's, this is not what I imagined then. But also, like you said, I can't be mad because there were times I did take my hand off the plow. What if I was just put my head down and like no matter what, no matter who buys what, I'm putting out three books here, period. Until I get a book deal, they gonna see me one way or another. But it does say But it's dangerous to live in the what if. Yeah. We we are I know that we're artists and creative, but we not gonna live in the should have changed or the what if. Yeah, because is are yeah. you gonna do it tomorrow? <laughs> I, mean, like, I mean, I will say I've done a lot better. Last year, I cranked out like what five. I mean, four of the items were not book books, but Courtney Lynn dropped like five projects last year, including an actual novel. So I mean, my first street fiction novel, and I think when I got scammed by old boy who kind of played me for my money on my comic, I got really I posted about it, so I put his name and everything. I kind of got discouraged. I was like, you know what? Mm. So that's what this is. I mean, that's not even me. Like, I'm such a cool and relaxed and calm that you don't have to play me or clown me. I probably just gave you $200 had you told me, but this is what you do. Is this how everyone in this industry is? I'm going to fall back. And then to get people better than people like that, you got to pay. Illustrators are not cheap. And he, I got him on the and <laughs> there's somebody. Yeah, I gotta find them. Cause I there's somebody that them. wants. Uh -oh. They don't have the ability to put the words together, so they yeah. just are waiting for you to say, "Here are the words. Can you put the pictures together?" Facts, because the the comic has been written now for a year. So I mean, it's it's time. It's time to move forward. So I mean, yes, some things do require resources. But some stuff you can do for free. Can't nobody take your pen away. Like, no matter what builders do, I can be in a homeless shelter and be writing a book. You know, even if it's just my deep thoughts, you know, so. To go back to the original, original topic, I would say uh, one of the negatives of being a multi-talented is that we squirrel and squirreling kind of keeps us in the beginning of all the things. Okay. And we... We whine about God. Why aren't we farther along? Because baby, you started 12 things. You ain't made it to the middle in none of the 12. You want credit for 12, but it's 12 ones. Okay. And that's fair. That is fair. And then you get the, you're all over the place. Damn. Maybe and then it's me. And it's, it's not even a logical, like it's not me comparing it to a logical. It's me just sitting in with me. How this summer I made earrings for the, I would say the first time, but I made I made yarn earrings for the first time and I made some resin earrings for the first time and I was excited and I was like, yeah, this is it right here. This is where, this is where we going to go. And my Lord and Savior, who is loud and a little aggressive with me, said, no, ma'am, we're focusing on words. But I like jewelry because it has such an immediate, I made it, I yeah. sell it, I yeah. got money. I made jewelry back in the day. Like, we are friends. <laughs> I went to my time. You feel me? Wooden earrings. I painted them, and this is when Jace was a baby. And I was getting it, had a little Instagram page and everything. And it's like, when I did that and I wasn't getting no customers, okay, on to the next thing. It's like, I, okay, I, I'll, I'll give you that. Okay. Do but like, we just got to figure out which one. With it? Do you think we get bored, or do you think. Like, do we, get, do we get bored? I don't think we get bored. I think. Or is it frustrating? I think I, me, I think I get impatient for from the starting phases to the middle phases to the end phases. Because okay. when it comes to our gifting, I feel like my gifting is the only, like not a plan, not a job. My gifting is the only thing that I start with the end in mind. I'm podcasting because I want the freedom to be flying across the world and to pick up and do a show with whoever I want to. I know. But I don't give myself the mental capacity for the step one, step two, step three through 13. I start with step 99 in mind. And when I'm not at 99, I get distracted and, or discouraged. And then I want to go do this other thing that has immediate gratification. It's, it's almost like we're always chasing our dopamine because we are. 
Okay. Like I've been in the season of like, we're all addicts. God, we are all addicts to something. And like, how do I, how do I, how do I, how do I? No, you're, you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. And then being surrounded by people who know you're multi-talented does not, if for me, it don't help because, oh, well, can you do my hair? I meant to oh, well, can you? Oh, it's on my sticky pad too. Okay. Okay, we were going to talk about the negatives. And I'm glad you brought it up. I hate she's already gone, but when you've already said what, I, what my question was, when people around you, especially, first of all, we have this black woman suit on. And to the world, that spells labor. We're already just as black. Even if you had no talent, the world is going to use you for labor in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. But when you are multi-talented and a black woman, that was the question, do you feel like it comes with labor because how many yes. trainings have i done for free for a family member just because they know i can paint yes but i feel bad i think for free so many times. god bless us we will move on it happens we can't change it we can't change it i think um i think it comes with its season i think because like even in the season i mean right now where i will take a hair client here and there I'm still learning how, you know, how you were talking about your partner and how you want your uh, husband to be your partner. I want my husband to be my partner too. But in the meantime, if the Lord would send me a Tiffany, I don't remember Tiffany's last name from Shreveport. She moved to Texas. Tiffany was our, she what? was both. No, she was a, who we're not going to do that. Cause I was going to start connecting dots and naming names that we don't have to, but <laughs> Tiffany was one of the few people in the world that was super artistic and super logical. And because of that, um, her strong point, like if, if I had a partner like Tiffany and I I put it out as a post, I think I put it on Twitter and I was like, I can't wait for my partner to get here because my partner going to set the prices. I'm over here worrying about what you got in your pocket. And my partner is like, no, thank you. We're making a profit. Moving on. Do you want it or not? And yeah. if you're not the customer, let's move on to find the customer. Okay? Like me and Toya, we trying to tell her, she's like, how much are they paying? Are they paying or not? They, yeah, but that's, that's her, but she's also a singular gift person. So I think, but she's like, made it to the financial bracket right, that we right. want. So, so we can't be looking at it like you're doing it wrong. She doing something right. We need to figure it out. Right or wrong, like it, it, if the goal is financial freedom, then the country yeah. is necessary. But the artist in us is compact. You can't be a. I'm an empath to the core, baby. I'm a sympathetic person, and then, <laughs> but that doesn't but, make me and my children money. <laughs> I was going to say the the negative of all of that is that we have a horrible a, we have a horrible practice of putting other people's truths, needs, uh, budgets in front of our own. Facts, no facts. And that that also is that place of like going into the project, going into the consignment, going into whatever it is with the end in mind. Which I don't do that again. I only do it for the big goal. Like oh. Sewing, I need to start. I'm gonna have a fashion house where I don't have to go work at it. Okay, okay. Podcasting, it's gonna be syndicated. I'm gonna be on this sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like I can see the end goal for the big things, but not for the case by case, but I'm working on it. Yeah. And we must do that so that there isn't a I'm feeling good or bad about this price. I don't need to feel nothing about the price. The price is what it is. Yesterday's prices are not today's. You know what? But we got to get there. Um, that kind of brings you back to the singular gift. Beyonce actually does do private shows, but you're coming out of a meal. And I highly doubt she's sitting there like, um, I don't know, because I got this undeniable gift. And I think when you're multi-gifted, we have several spread out things and our confidence isn't in all of them. So can I really, like I said earlier, I can carry it home, but can I, maybe I'll just sing it your thing for free because I'm not really saying all that good. Like, I'm kind of good. And I ain't had no training, like, you know, so and so over there who can blow for show. So I do that show for free, you know. But blow for show is like, this is the price. And either you're going to pay it or you're not. Because I know and I, Yeah. But I think that's when we are dabbling in multiple gifts instead of focusing. I forgot who we, we have multiple examples. I can't think of anybody right now, but somebody who transitioned from like being. The Rock Johnson is a great example. That baby was introduced to us as a wrestler. Yeah. And that baby transitioned into an actor. 
technically he was already acting, but he transitioned into being an actor. Or people who are musical and then they transition into acting. Yeah. Scrappy. Scrappy. Scrappy said, I love music. I love it. But it ain't got nothing on that TV chat. And those people who, who yeah, or or thinking about um oh I can't think of his name. I think he played Bobby Brown. Um we I, I think he, he played Woody. I feel like Woody Woody dances, Woody acts, and I'm almost sure Woody does music, but the I think the discipline that we as multis lack is picking one sticking to it once it pops off going okay. to the next one okay and i will I we want to bloop everything at once and it's like no okay you're keeping yourself stuck at number one and you don't have to be stuck at number one you could actually be at step 12 you feel like you deserve step 12 reparations but you at 12 step ones you're not at step 12 that's a word. That's a word. I, I, I totally feel that and I do agree. Like, stick with X. Okay? Something. And then when X pops off, you can do X, Y, Z. So I feel you on that. Okay. Yeah. And the, the problem is we get frustrated with the until. Because, yeah. baby, that's... The we. If, I feel like if we can get on the other side of that discipline, we can do it. <sighs> fat. But no fat. Uh, it's work, baby. It is, and you have to show up. Like you have to show up. So, and it makes you feel good. Like I'm a checklist girly, and even uh when I was doing my plays, that it just check. When we did that check, and it keeps me organized because I have a scatterbrain. But like once you kind of step outside that, that's when stuff is going around, and it's like let me calm down. Like you said, I'm I'm thinking, oh, podcast, but what are the ten steps I need to do my first episode? Order my write it down. Order my check. Order let you know check. Get guests check. And before you know it, you are at the step. But when I guess when you have to do that twenty times <laughs> to get to a check, oh Lord, is it worth it? <laughs> but it changes. Like if you do it, if you according to Et, according according to Eric Et Thomas, who has done it. You ain't got to do it 20 times. I get it. 20 is overwhelming. He said, I, we trust God that on step 14, he going to send you somebody. And guess what? You ain't even got to do all 12 steps by yourself no more. I done bought you somebody who believes in you and they going to do uh, eight through 12. You just got to do one through eight. And then guess what? By the time you get to 25, he just sent you somebody else who believes in you. Right. And your job is to show up now. <laughs> Can you show up? Can you do your part? You know what? Speaking of Tyler Perry, and I remember people used to like, you know, give me that compliment. If you've ever heard his story, he didn't just, he put that play on seven times. Now he could afford to do, I cannot. <laughs> but he put that play on seven times. He could know. not afford it. Te you were right. Technically he could not because he ended up being homeless. So, but he still did it seven times with no one. And then he started doing email listings and got people to come. He, it's the seven times that we want to skip. And I, I agree with that because that first time, Dang, that hurt me, that hurt my pockets, that hurt my pride, that hurt a lot. I might try this again, but after after the second, I'm done. You know, so mm -hmm. and I think that's why there's only a small percentage of people who do break through because it is no fault to the people that because we're human. And and like I said, it's hard. You got to respond if you got people depend on you, you can't do certain things. He can live by his car. I cannot. <laughs> go to jail, I get that you can't live out of your car, but we know a bunch of black men specifically yeah. that attest to the fact that, like, no, my mother tried. My yeah. mother gave it all she had. Um, yeah. Cynthia Arova, I love it. When she talks about her mama, she was like, my mama got it out the mud. We we was figuring it out. Yeah. Janelle Monet, I don't know if I like that as her real story, but if it is, she said all we could afford was good with. And we was affording it and moving on. You know? Yeah. Yeah, like and the so same way. Out, yeah, it worked out for the kids, but I wonder that mom's dream did that ever come to fruition, or was it? I mean, was that really what her goal was? Was to get your not the your kids? Of course, that's important, of course. But it's like I got dreams and goals and aspirations too. And I mean, we chose this life because abortion was an option. You know, you chose this life, but it's like when you are responsible for others, your dreams do take a back seat, whether you want them to or not. But Kanye's mama. Mm -hmm. 
he talked about how she was in school when she was doing this and we were struggling and figuring it out. Yeah. And she still, she made it. But she taught me that you can make it. And she taught me that it was hard. I thought she was. Like a, she was in school. She was a professor. Remember? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, and he'll tell the stories of how, like, we was out here getting how we live. It worked out. Like, eventually, she bought a house and life got more stable. But yeah. life had to get more stable. Yeah. And it's it's really heavy on what are you gonna teach them? You're teaching them something. Yeah, whether you sign up for it or not, you are teaching them something. And so I would love, of course, our I won't say the wrong thing. Some old school parents are very I struggled, so you got to struggle. That's another topic for another day. But Miss um, Evans is not nice. like like as I as I said, Jamil is in the process of you speak, and it's it's costing me dearly. But if if God forbid. In this life, I can't become everything. I'd be damned if you don't. So, I mean, that is a gift in itself. I, but also on the flip side, my dream is to give you the world. Not I had to wait for you to get grown so you can reach back and give me the world. So, I mean, I get it. Do you hear how heavy that is, though? See, either way, we're taking the mansion. But, like, <laughs> I was like, that's very heavy. You know, but it's like, I want to give you the world. You're my baby. It shouldn't be mama struggle. We live here and there. And there. I hate my goal was by the time they got to a certain age, they wouldn't even remember struggle. Well, that is yeah. bad. They don't remember struggle. But when I ask them, of course, they're like, oh, I don't feel like we have less than our friends. I feel like, we, you know, so I'm like, okay, I'm doing right. But in my mind, still, I'm so talented. Why don't we have a house here? Like, what? Why am I not able to not work it? You know, so it's it's very taking me for saying at times. But if that's God's will that I'm just here to push my baby to fruition and he can reach back and buy me a mansion by all means, yay. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna decline. <laughs> I'm not gonna decline, but I wanted to retire my mama. You know what I'm saying? But like so man, it ain't over to the fat lady saying it ain't over. Until it's over. We are not old and it's not over. So, you know, it just, we just came today to talk about the frustrations that do come because it does get frustrating. Ain't mm -hmm. no time gonna stop being pushed over here. But it does get it does. Do I do I look up to the sky and be like, what's my I got? Like, what's my You know, what's up? Yeah. You, know, you give me these gifts for what? Because like <laughs> I sold like a hundred books. Like, what's up? Like, and that's over the ten years. <laughs> <laughs> And then Blow Joe drops a book that is trash, and Netflix didn't pick it up. Everybody didn't pick it up. You're like, what, what, what's up? But there's a team behind that person. You are looking at you, one individual versus somebody with a team. Somebody who knew the right people to talk to. Somebody who knew the right ways to spin it. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, yeah. not like we are going to get our teams. We just got to make sure that we're ready to lead them and be the source of everybody's income. True, true. And also, like I was saying earlier, they have the knowledge. You don't just get a book deal because you wrote a good book. You have to query. I didn't even know what query was until I moved out here. I was like, what is that? Pretty much you pitch your book yourself. You put together a presentation, but you don't know how to do that no matter how good your story is. And it can be life-changing unless by some miraculous Woosh of God, they're going to look at this unprofessional script, this unprofessional presentation, and they're going to throw it in the garbage can. And they're going to move on to the next one that was put together correctly and read it. So I think it's resources and knowledge. And honestly, both those things can be gotten. Even if you can't get the resources, if you get the knowledge, you in there. Like, you can learn how to get money. You know, you can't put together a Kickstarter if you don't even know what that is. <laughs> but now you know. And now you in there. <laughs> like, so, I mean, hmm, this has been the awesome, this is an awesome conversation. Sorry, gosh. I had it come be live. I'm going to keep learning, y'all. I apologize. <laughs> I mean, it's like me again, you know, because clearly we can talk, but we can't do nothing else, God. God damn it. Cool. <laughs> again, you know, the gifting, the gifting is in the mouth. So, yeah, we can yeah, talk. Many, many top, like, we talked about topics. I was like, you know what? That's going to be a good topic for that time. But uh, I was like, let me get them too, because if anybody knows the beauty 
and struggle of being multi talented. And also, like we were starting to say earlier, I remember thinking that when I was writing my questions, art is so beautiful, but beauty is pain. And that's part of when people see that gift and want to use it, you know, and you don't have a heart because you're a creative and because you're multi talented because you're sweet and because you're in bad, to be like, no. Or to be like, what I like about Chanel? You gonna pay her? <laughs> she she's flourishing with the other things she did my break. Guess what? I didn't get the homegirl discount. I paid. <laughs> and you pineapple, but you gonna pay ten dollars? It's a choice. Cause we be it's a choice. My my therapist, as we're talking about our therapist, my therapist and I were talking about how I avoided somebody because I didn't want to give them a price that would have been sufficient for what they were asking for. And she said, Why? She said, I tell you what, if you don't want to do it, next time get them a price that like is outrageous. Because one or two things are going to happen. They're yeah. going to pay it, and that'll motivate you. That'll motivate you. <laughs> or they're going to say no, and they're going to get out your face, which is what you want. Girl, you are smart. That's why you do this work, ain't it? Right, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good idea, therapist. Because I don't really want to do it no way. So, but we we don't have to give like the discounts don't have to. It would be nice. It would be ideal. But I feel like the nice and ideal is if we were able to live in the nice and ideal world. We live yeah. in this world, and it's ghetto out here. It's real, real ghetto, real ghetto. And it's like with being women already, we're very conditioned to be polite and to always. Because you don't want to come off as aggressive. You don't want to be mean, rude, a bitch. So, even though... But we learn business from men. And my cousin be like, business is business. You saw that, but... Especially black women, we have to... It's so much sinning and grinning that goes into being who we are. So, even our nose have to be extremely polite. Or someone's going to be hurt. Someone's going to be mad. And I think once you grow past that, it's up. Once you get to that point where it's like, this is the price. This is what I'm charging. And if we can do business, great. And if not, okay. Because it does hurt a little bit when somebody hits you up. And yes, they're finally interested in your service. You know, yes. And then you hit them with that price. And then you get up on red. It, it teams a little bit. It seems a little bit. They told me to make a price sheet. But since pricing gives me anxiety, just make a price sheet. Just send it to them. Starting it. Here you go. Boop, bop, boop, da, bop, bam. Yeah. This is what it is. But I want to make a price sheet for the stuff I don't want to do or the stuff I'm not allowed to focus on right now. So, Mm-mm. yeah, it has been wonderful. It has been. So I'm gonna um, edit this and get it posted. Make a few clips for TikTok and <laughs> try to figure out how to go live so we can get people's questions and comments and simultaneously record. But until then. <laughs> Y'all can check the pre-recorded episode out. I'm going to put it up on YouTube as well. Courtney Larry Presents, I believe. And um, also on TikTok, Courtney Larry Presents. So, nomenclature is the same all the way around. And the podcast is The Thick Writer Tip. So, did you want to tell the people where to find you, girl? Uh, I'm on Instagram, tba.conversations. Um, there's the Bread Out Conversations podcast on Spotify. I'm going to do my very best to get it on Apple. I added an Apple ID, but I'm an Android user, so I was very uninterested in that at first. Uh, I'm on TikTok. It's like tba.conversations. Or my, I'm everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> my plug was horrible, but that's the type of things that we have to work on so that our elevator pitch can be spiffy. Right. Working on it. Working on being logical and put together as well as creative so mm-hmm. all right friend girl i will talk to you later thanks everyone for joining us good night